işte Zeren Hortum Ticaret Kurulu Başkanı Sayın Ocak Kadakal'ın konuk olacağı konferans gerçekleştirilmiştir. İzlediğinizde ilk açılış konuşmalarını yapmak üzere İli Dayanım Kurulu Başkanı ve Ankara Barası AB Dışişleri İşler Merkezi Başkanı Sayın Avukat Arzun Bulu Kürsü'ye davet ediyorum. Covid-19 pandemisinin etkilerini yavaş yavaş evde bıraktığımız bu dönemde de Türk yakınımcılarının Karadağ alan ilgisinin artarak devam etmesi beklenmektedir. Bu bağlamda Türk ve Karadağ şirketlerinin karşılıklı faaliyetlerinin artması ve Karadağ'da pek çok temel sektörde Türk iş adamları için önemli fırsatlar bulunması, yatırım ve ticaret konularının güncel olarak ele alınması ihtiyacını sürekli hale getirmektedir. Bu gelişmelere koşul olarak, Karadağ ve ticari faaliyetlerde ve yatırım süreçlerinde hukuki açıdan dikkat edilmesi gereken hususlar hem Türk şirketleri hem de avukatlar açısından ayrıca önemli hale gelmektedir. Zira Türk iş insanlarının Karadağ artan bilgisi sevgilimiz olur. Budgarit, the capital city, located in a green valley, only 40 kilometers from the sea connecting southern and northern Montenegro, as well as different cultures, religions, and nations. So the conventions, speeches, and wonderful work about our country. And thank you for hosting us today. It's always a pleasure coming to the chapter of the industry of Ankara. Uh, First of all, I must say that I'm very honored to be the ambassador of uh, such a country as Montenegro is. It's an honor and it's a pleasure to be an ambassador in a country as Turkey. Uh, this is my first time as an ambassador. I'm three years uh, arrived here in September 2019 and I can go over my credentials and became full fledged ambassador in October 2019. The interesting fact about that date is that uh, in October 140 years before, the first ambassador of the Ottoman Empire handed over his credential to, at that time, our prince uh, uh, So, Turkey and Montenegro has the uh, tradition of 140 uh, years of uh, diplomatic uh, relations. Uh, I studied uh, in uh, Italy. Uh, in the University of Pasadena, uh, uh, international political science and international relations. Uh, I specialized myself in the private university of Montenegro, University of Donegorica, and currently I'm trying to finish. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I don't have a time. My master degree in Pasadena, uh, University of Pasadena, in, in Rome. I started my uh, career uh, to work to be connected to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, actually in the University of Montenegro. In, in Rome. Then I worked in the ministry in the different uh, positions, starting from the general directory uh, for NATO and security policy, then in the office of the state secretary for political relations, in the office of the minister of foreign relations, and I had the pleasure as well uh, to be, uh, how to say, a second to the prime minister's uh, office and work as assistant foreign policy advisor, and at that time, as uh, foreign policy advisor of the uh, uh, Prime Minister was our national coordinator for the new accession project, so I was deeply involved as well in this uh, in the accession of Montenegro in the in the NATO. Uh, then I worked in our embassy as a diplomat in our embassy in Abu Dhabi, and after that I had the pleasure to work in the Parliament of Montenegro as a foreign policy advisor to the Speaker of the Parliament, after uh, which I came here in Turkey and became uh, the ambassador. So it was really a uh, uh, pleasure to have the possibility to get to know the whole, uh, how to say, uh, institutions of Montenegro from, from inside, ministry, embassies, uh, parliament, and, uh, and the office of the prime. My consideration several, several aspects. Uh, Montenegro uh, uh, uh, is one of the most stable countries in, in, in, in the Balkan Peninsula. Uh, we 
we are the only country uh, which fortunately didn't experience war in home territory during the dissolution of Yugoslavia. Uh, we are the country who managed to, uh, there are always uh, some challenges and difficulties, but we are the country who managed to preserve multicultural, multi ethnic, and multi religious uh, character of our uh, society. And that was very well reflected, I think, in the video that was, uh, that was shown. Uh, this uh, politics of Montenegro, when we decided to become an independent country, uh, it was because we wanted to take our destiny in our hands and to decide about our destiny on ourselves. And uh, the main priorities and foreign policy goals of Montenegro from that moment were to join the NATO, which we had set up in 2017, and the second one was to join the European uh, Union, as we are still uh, still uh, trying uh, trying to do. Uh, one of the basis of our foreign policy is to have good neighbor relations with, with all uh, our uh, neighbors. Why I'm saying this? Because when you look in one small country, which is uh, around 14,000 14, kilometers squares, and you look at the country which has a market of 620,000 people, you are not so attracted to invest in, in Montenegro. But if you look to the Montenegro as a potential hub to expand your business in the other Balkan countries and the other countries of the Southeast uh, Europe, then definitely Montenegro should be your choice because of its geographical position and because of all these reasons that I already, that I already uh, mentioned. So we are very well advanced on our path to the European Union. We started our negotiation process in 2012. If you ask me when we are expecting to become a member, I, I will not be able to give you this, uh, this, this answer because it's not, uh, you know, it's not something that is depending only on us. But you should look at Montenegro as a small system who is very easily harmonizing itself with the European Union uh, legislation. And I think that this is very important from the point of view of the rule of law and I, with the fact that we are already a member of the NATO and uh, with the fact that we are always harmonizing our uh, judicial and uh, judiciary system with the uh, European Union, I think this is good grounds for, uh, for, the potential, for the potential investors. I must tell that Montenegro attracted per capita most in, uh, investments in Southeast uh, uh, Europe, uh, and uh, uh, that uh, uh, Turkey is uh, uh, uh, always in the first 10 uh, countries who are investing in, in, in investing in Montenegro. Then Euro is our currency since the beginning. Uh, we are not the members of the Eurozone, but we use the Euro as our, uh, our currency, which is another uh, thing that is, is, is, that is helpful. Uh, we have uh, two airports, uh, we have one important port uh, uh, in, in, in Montenegro, uh, very good connections, uh, railway connections uh, with Serbia and then with Central Europe. Uh, so these are some of, uh, uh, of the reasons why somebody should decide uh, to choose Montenegro. You know, everybody, every representative of the government will say, yes, we are doing our best to uh, attract uh, the investors, uh, the taxation system is good. Yes, in Montenegro we have very good and favorable taxation system. Uh, we have incentives, uh, we have tax exemptions and similar thing. It's very easy to open the company in, in Montenegro and we will mention that, uh, that, uh, that later. But uh, you should look at Montenegro as a whole package. And this is, I think, something which could be attractive for the, for the potential for the potential in, in, in investors, and we have one investor, investor, investor here, so it would be very good to hear his experience as well. Uh, concerning company types and company establishment processes, uh, it is very important for investors to, mm -hmm. to understand the legal structuring from the first month of, you know, the, the, the ambassador. So, could you 